How's it going, everybody? My name is Jason. I'm an engineer here at AEM Performance Electronics. If you're joining us from our previous screens video, welcome back. If you haven't taken a look at that video, make sure uh, to go back and watch that video, get an idea of all of our various screens and all their functionality. And in this video, we're gonna show you how to, a little bit more in depth, set up one of your screens uh, and the design process involved with that. So I'm gonna, I have a layout open here already on my desktop. Um, I'm going to just open up the first screen and kind of walk through all the different elements that are present on this screen. So the first thing that's gonna stand out at you here on this screen is our large round taco gauge. And this is actually a background image that's been imported. And the actual gauge itself on this screen is simply this orange needle here. And we can change things like the color, for instance. So let's say uh, I wanna get a little frisky and make it pink. So I'm gonna make it pink. So we've changed our needle color. And the next thing we can do is actually preview the needle to make sure that we've got everything lined up and oriented correctly. So right now it's showing a preview value of zero. So preview value, let's do 5,000 RPM. And hey, look at that, that needle's lined up right on 5,000 RPM. You can also see the pink box that outlines this needle. That shows you that window in which that gauge is, is occupying. What's also neat uh, about this software, if you take a look here in your gauge structure uh, window, you can see these little icons next to each and every single item that's listed here. Those icons correlate with this uh, top menu up here. So that, uh, let's say you want a certain type of gauge and you maybe don't know which style to use or which icon uh, to use, you uh, can go into other layouts and reference that and know which, uh, which style to use. So for this boost uh, numeric readout, this is a value. So if I go up here, this is also a value. So this, this will get linked to a channel and this will update based on the CAN data that is being broadcast from your CAN device into the dash and update that value. And again, we can, we can preview. So let's say we want 225 KPA and now we can see. The other nice aspect of this preview value is we can simulate large numbers and ensure that those numbers aren't gonna overlap with let's say our, our KPA label that we've created. And if we find that we are overlapping, we can simply use the arrow keys and move things over, around, up, down, whatever your heart desires. You'll also notice that when I move this, it jumps a fixed amount each time. Now what that relates to is this little function down here. This is our snap to grid function and now we can change our grid size. Uh, so the larger the number, the more the, uh, the more the feature is gonna move on the screen every time we use the arrow key or dragging and dropping. You can entirely disable that by clicking on this icon here. So now when I go to move it, it's not fixed to any set grid size. So I can, I can move this around and place it exactly where I want it to be. Okay, so now we're just gonna do a quick run through of what all of the different gauge uh, and function icons we have available up here at the top uh, mean. And we're gonna drag and drop each one into a blank screen and just to give you a, a quick idea and visualization of what each, each of those does. So I'm gonna move over to my second screen here, which I've uh, cleared the screen. And the first we have is our horizontal tack, and we can drag and drop that in. And you can see that is just a, a simple uh, horizontal tachometer. We can select our input value, our preview value, change our colors, change our fonts, and we can set our start value and our end value uh, as well. So I'm gonna delete this off the screen. And I'm gonna show you what a numeric value represents. So with this, we need to select an input 
And all that's gonna do is give you the, the, the readout of, of the value of that channel. We have our fixed text. So this is what you're gonna use to put labels on adjacent to numeric values. And we have our floating needle. This was used to create the large tack needle on the previous screen. And you can move this around, size it however you want. And we're not gonna go too in depth into this. We have another video uh, following this video that's gonna give you a lot more in depth view on how to use all of these different functions. Image, this is how you paste an image onto the screen. So you would use these for backgrounds, things like that. We have our warning bar, which this, I don't really know what the warning bar does. <laughs> <laughs> the block that changes color depending on its input. Seems reasonable. <laughs> Typically, this is used to indicate an out of range parameter, maybe placed next to or behind a gauge. Oh yeah, I've used these before. So for instance, what I've used these before in the past is I've had a, a, a numeric value. Uh, let's say I had uh, coolant temp, for instance, and um, I would place one of these warning bars behind that numeric value. And if the coolant temp was too cold, I could have that warning bar blue. So it would illuminate blue behind that, that text label. And if it was too hot, I can have it illuminate red. Beyond just reading the number, there's also a visual indication, a color change that indicates to you that something's out of range. And that's what you'd use these for. And our next one is a dynamic text display. So these are associated with channels that you have configured uh, that have a corresponding text to a bit value or a numeric value. So for instance, uh, let's say your mode switch, you have mode zero through 11 or one through 12, and you can assign text to each of those. So let's say for instance, my mode one is my low boost. If mode one is active and I have this text value configured correctly, and that text is low boost, then this gauge here will just, and I link it to that mode switch, this gauge will display low boost when I'm on setting one. Say my setting two is a high boost and I have it set to display high boost, I move to setting two, this will change and display high boost. So you can use it for things like that. And we have our standard horizontal square graph. You can use these things for throttle position, um, tack, anything that's gonna uh, vary rapidly or often. Same thing, vertical, same functionality as a horizontal, along with the horizontal triangular bar graph and our vertical triangular bar graph. These all function exactly the same. Uh, it's just different shapes. So this, this icon here is a fixed shape. Um, basically, it's a circle or a square with a configurable outline and fill. More than likely, you're not gonna use this functionality because anytime you're gonna need any of these shapes or colors or what have you, you're gonna build that into your background layout that you're gonna design outside of dash design and then import in uh, using the image function. Uh, we also have a limiter light gauge. So these are cool because you can create limiter lights uh, that are linked to any channel. So you can have you know, RPM, throttle position. You can change them from square to circle. Uh, we can change their uh, start and increment values. I don't have a input assigned. So let me, um, let me grab engine speed here real quick. And we're gonna make our increments of uh, a thousand. So I wanna preview 3000 RPM, three lights, four lights come on, because our first light represents zero. We're gonna move on to the next, which is a crosshair gauge. These are actually kind of interesting because we can use these things uh, specifically for uh, VDM functionality for our pitch roll and yaw values or our Excel values. We can assign an X input and our Y input. So we have our lateral and longitudinal that we can bring in and this crosshair, which we can also change the shape of to, what's the one I like, plus sign, that's it. So this will move around in two dimensional space here. Um, what a lot of people like to do is they'll actually draw like the uh, Excel rings around this. And so you'll have, you know, a half G, a one G and a one and a half G ring. And you can configure this so that this will move in accordance with your G loading. You know, that data will come from our VDM, for instance. So these are really neat and uh, kind of fun to watch, but maybe not while you're driving. 
The next is a graph or strip chart. Not the type of strip you're thinking of. Get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, so basically what this is, is this is a live updating um, plot of any value you wanna see. Uh, so you can have engine speed vary on these plots. You can set the time base, you can set the color, the background, the number incrementing the line count adds a, a second line here on the preview, also adds a second input available. These aren't necessarily super useful uh, for when you're looking at your dash, but they're kind of neat to, to play with. And our last is a circle tachometer. This is kind of a generic tack that's pre-built. More than likely, you're gonna use the floating needle option and put the needle on a, a pretty background that you've created. Uh, but if you need something quick and dirty, uh, for engine speed or vehicle speed, you can drag these in, change the colors, change the backgrounds, change your start and end values. That's gonna wrap up our design video. I know we didn't go into too much detail here, but rest assured we're putting together uh, a second video to follow this, where one of our engineers here is going to start from scratch and build one of our, our more complex and in-depth layouts. And we're gonna put that up for you guys to watch and, and see what really goes into building some of these layouts that are very intricate and very complex and really how long it takes to do, but also how easy it is to do with our, our Dash Design software. Uh, so make sure to tune in for that. Follow us on our social media, uh, Facebook and Instagram at AEM Electronics. Leave a comment and a like down on this video. Let us know what uh, you'd like to see in the future and make sure you don't miss any future video updates. Thanks for watching. <music>